Hey friends, so today we are going to be talking about date night in a minivan and we are going to be talking about the importance of dating your partner. So I'm going to start today by just sharing one of Hunter and Mai's our five year plus goals and we have a long term goal, well this is really more of a dream, to, um, to, do, to renew our wedding vows at our 50th and 75th wedding anniversaries and to say a uh, blessing over our children's marriages and our grandchildren's marriages at that time. And I've been saving our Christmas cards every year. And recently, if you guys know who Lisa Turkhurst is, she's a famous author. She did this. So these are, this is a picture of her and her husband. I think this was their 25th wedding anniversary. Maybe we do it for our 25th too. And that's all of our kids and the ones that are married, they're there. So that's, that's kind of like a long-term dream that Hunter and I have. Also, I wanted to share the story that in our very first marriage counseling session, when we did marriage counseling about three years ago, our counselor asked us, what do you want your relationship to be like 80 years from now? And that question has just stuck with me for so long. So basically the point of both of those stories is you want to think like Stephen Covey says to begin with the end in mind. What do you want your marriage to look like five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, 80 years from now? What do you want your relationship with the most important person in your life to look like? You know, I had a mentor in college who used to say all the time, you know, babysitters are expensive, but they're not as expensive as a divorce. And in sociology, I learned in college that uh, divorces, they, if you look at the at when divorces happen in the course of a family's lifetime, they spike up when you have two or more kids in that preschool age range because life is just so crazy stressful. Can anybody relate? And then they dip down and then they spike up again when the, when the husband and wife go through uh, empty nest, when the, old, the youngest child leaves the home. So the point of this is, of course, if you are out there right now and, and you're listening to this and you're divorced, not to make you feel guilty by any means. And if, if you're out there right now and you're married, but you're not regularly dating, also the purpose of this is not to make you feel guilty, obviously, and not to should you into feeling like this is just another thing that you wanna to add to your to-do list. My goal today is to motivate you and empower you on how to implement regular date nights into your relationship. Okay, so here are some ideas. Uh, so there is a book that I read about seven years ago called Date Night in a Minivan. It's a super cute book. Um, I, I actually gave it away as a door prize when I first started my very first babysitting co-op. And they explain the science behind dating. And basically, in order to keep Kind of that loving fresh feeling alive in your relationship the key is to do different things on a regular basis with your spouse so your brain has to feel like this is a new exciting experience and that causes those um those those i don't, I don't know what it is I, i'm not a neurologist but it causes your brain to feel like you're young and in love again which is kind of the goal of dating that, that you stay feeling like you're in love with your partner. Okay, so I want to encourage you to keep it fresh when you go on your dates. You don't want to go to the same restaurant and order the same thing, but do different things for every date if possible. Uh, Rachel Hollis and her husband Dave did a great podcast where they said what they do is once a year or something, they write down a bunch of ideas on popsicle sticks and then they put all the popsicle sticks in a bag or something. And then for each date night, you have to pull out a popsicle stick and whatever it says, you do what's on that popsicle stick. So that's one way to keep it fresh. There, I also want to suggest to you there's power in planning something exciting and then looking forward to it. Now, I mentioned earlier, I encourage you to batch your planning, all planning, for one to two months out. But an example of this is this Friday is my husband and I's wedding anniversary and we are going to go on a lunch cruise where we had the same... That's where we did our um, our wedding reception on this same boat. So we're going back to that same boat. And I booked that, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. So we've been looking forward to it for a long time. 
So part of, uh, this is another like brain science tip, part of the enjoyment of something is the anticipation of it. So your brain releases oxytocin and dopamine anticipating an exciting activity. So it is super fun to plan things out in advance and then you can, you know, you, my husband and I do this all the time. We're like, oh, we're going to Top Golf on Friday or we're going, we're going on the cruise on Friday and I for sure am looking forward to it until it happens. Sometimes science says sometimes the looking forward and anticipation of the event is actually more pleasurable than the event itself. So uh, you might want to consider planning it in advance so you guys can look forward to it. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It can be just, you know, whatever it is, just without children and where you two are connecting emotionally. Okay, so it could be going on a bike ride. It could be going to McDonald's. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. It just has to be time set aside where you're prioritizing emotionally and romantically connecting with your partner. You want to flirt on your date night. You want to flirt like leading up to the date night. You want to dress up. So um, <laughs> Rachel Rachel Hollis in her podcast, she says she's she goes, I wear my good bra, the, the good push-up bra, you know, and the sexy panties. So you want to dress up for your partner. And this would go the same for guys out there if, if you're listening. Ideally, you would have so much fun on your date nights that it would end in sex. It doesn't have to, but that's kind of, you know, nice. And um, the other tip is to do it ideally a, like the same day and the same time every week. So Rachel Hollis and her husband, they have a standing date night every Thursday night. My husband and I, we do first and third Friday of the month. We have a standing babysitter and we do it that same time. And that way, if Hunter wants to plan something, usually I plan the date nights because I'm the planner in our relationship, which is totally fine. But if he wants to, then he knows exactly when the babysitter is set up for and when we have time blocked off on our calendars. This is another, this is just another, a different iteration of batching, you know, but I encourage you to have a standing date night. The goal, I have heard a lot of people say the goal is once a week. My husband and I have not gotten there yet, but maybe one day I'm sure that we will. Um, and then let's talk about the babysitter because I feel like that's the biggest obstacle that a lot of um, moms that I talk to or families is the babysitter. So I wanna introduce you to, there's an app called Kome, and I think it's maybe $5 a month, something like that, but it's a babysitting co-op app that you can start your own babysitting co-op, but you can also find sitters and include your regular sitters. It's super cool, designed by moms, just uh, it's K-O-M-A-E, or sittingaround.com. I have started two babysitting co-ops now in my life and we've used the, those, the sittingaround.com, but we're probably in, we're probably gonna move to Kome because it has an app. Um, you can trade sits with another couple. So you can say, I do this with a family here in our area. You can say just once a month, you work out a date that you're gonna trade back and forth. Or you can do a date night in. So in the homework and notes, I'm gonna include a list of different um, services that will mail you like a date night in and if you can't afford a babysitter or, or there isn't there's a trust issue like not, not issue but a trust factor you could do a date night in but the same rules apply you want to keep it fresh you want to dress up for your partner you want to be put it in the schedule you want to be looking forward to it and the kids should be away and in bed and they are not allowed to interrupt the date night. It's like you were going out, but you're doing the date night in. The last thing, it, this is just kind of a sidebar, is I wanna encourage you to set a goal to go away with your partner one time a year for at least one night overnight every year, okay? And for some of you, you might feel like there's a lot of obstacles getting there. Um, and some of you are, might, that might be easy, but if you, if you feel like that's really hard, then just put it as one of your goals for this year and let your brain and the universe and God figure out how to make that happen. But I believe if you set it as a goal, it can happen and it will do wonders in keeping that spark alive, 
um, you know, the combination of the weekly or bi-weekly date nights and then one time a year you go away for at least overnight just makes you feel like you're human again um, and that you're young and in love and it's super awesome. All right, guys.